I'm going to start interviewing our first guest of the evening. Welcome to the bench, Mr. V. Vale. Do you want me to sit on the, the stool? Oh, wait. Let me check you. Does this work? Oh, it does. Yeah. Or does it? Yeah. Does it? it does. I'm just louder than you. Let's switch. Let's switch. Okay. Ooh, this is gold. That. Ooh, this is louder. I thought you were going to sit down. I feel kind of like a dick for sitting down now. Should I just keep standing? Oh, I, oh, I didn't realize I was standing. <laughs> 420, everyone. Welcome to 420. Okay. He didn't realize he was standing. Wait, Bill, am I right about this? You have never done drugs either? Oh, no. Uh -uh. I'm against drugs. I really am. <laughs> Great to have you on the 420 show, then. Yeah. Why? What, what, what day is this? Marijuana day or something? Uh, is it? Okay, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm completely... National Marijuana Day. Marijuana day. International yeah. Marijuana Day. Oh, oh. Good for that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but you, well, you're you well known for being an uh, associate of William Burroughs. You know, just because some of your primary mentors in your life were junkies doesn't mean you have to be one. Yeah. I'll tell you, my first mentor was uh, before Burroughs. Or was it? Yeah, before Burroughs. The, how many people have ever heard of the Surrealist beat poet Philip Lamontia. Anyone in the room? One person? Well, he's actually probably the greatest beat poet. But how many people know it? Why isn't he famous? Because he didn't go to New York and, you know, schmooze it up with the... Uh, Is that what you have to do? Go oh, to yeah, the yeah, you can never make it in this town. Take note. You have to go to New York. Everyone you performing tonight, have remember to. that. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, Philip Lamontia, he was my first mentor. He was, he was an amazing surrealist poet. And if you've never heard of him, which you haven't, please go to the library and for free get all his books. And if you're lucky, you will see uh, Narcotica, which I doubt you'll find. And it has pictures of Philip shooting up on the cover. That may be the very first book in the world ever printed of a human, the author, actually shooting up with a needle. It's not like those kids' books where all like, the top right. animals are shooting up. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> <laughs> not like, the first, you said the first book where a human shooting up on the cover. I was just thinking, imagining an animal shooting up on the cover. <laughs> well, humans are animals. Go okay. get point taken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I forget that once in a while. Yeah, yeah, so, anyway, <laughs> d d does anyone actually value poetry in this room? I I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how many people? Yeah. Three? Yeah. Four? Oh, good. That, good that five on the back. I like poetry. I like poetry. I like poetry. Yeah, yeah, well, well, poetry is like, that's the only kind of prose that lasts, you know, is po poetic prose. I mean, I was just, I woke up this morning with this line from a, from a, from a poetic prose book that I'd read about 30 years ago. And you know what the line was? Why did this stick in my mind? The musicians, and I know everyone in this room is one, the musicians' faces were heavily scarred. I don't know, it seemed like a poetic line to me, but nobody laughed. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> So yeah, so so I would say my second mentor was William Burroughs, okay. who was a bona fide junkie, but he was not. He, you know, it's very. He makes he didn't very, say he, No, no, it's it's not that. He always says that he couldn't write until he got off junk. This is not a recommendation to take junk from William Burroughs. And, uh, yeah. But you're personal. You were in, uh, but you also were in Blue Cheer, which is like an early psychedelic rock band. That's on Wikipedia, dude. I, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to out you on that one. 
Yeah. Well, you're, you're, you're known as a keyboard player also, so that's just yeah. like another way to work in your musical angle. Oh, I brought a DVD, but you can't play it, can you? Oh, we can, yeah. Oh, you there. Yeah. yeah, we will do it at the end. It's just two minutes. Oh. Of me uh, playing piano. Oh. And, oh. And I should just brought a piano. I really didn't think about it. <laughs> well, it, it's me playing piano and one of the guys at Devo singing the song that he wrote oh. called Mongoloid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which guy from Devo is that? Not the one you'd think. Okay. <laughs> Cathali. Yeah. yeah. One of the Cathali. Wow, you're literate. You're informed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that. that was, I wasn't kidding. I'm going to excerpt that and send it to my mom. <laughs> but, uh, no, you, you did a lot of early... Okay, so you actually... I don't know if people know your history. You started the punk magazine Search and Destroy in, 90, in 77. That like is the, totally, the, how many people know my history? Nobody. <laughs> it's difficult. <laughs> um, I hear you. Okay, I, I, I was going to bring a DVD and show it, but hell of it. I happened to bring some. Oh. This is my first punk publication from 1977 to 79. Ooh. You can actually buy them. In original packaging. Yeah. Sure yeah. yeah, you can buy them for five bucks each. And the reason why is because they never sold that well. Why? <laughs> you're ahead of your time. Well, because we're in San Francisco. Oh, okay. Come on. If we're taking anything away from this tonight, we need to get that no, no, but we should value being in San Francisco. Don't get me wrong. I love it here. What is the it's value just, if you're... Yeah, what is the value? What do you mean? The value? Yeah, the value. The value is you can have an event like this and not really worry about, you know, the bottom line, money. How's that? <laughs> you could be broke in San Francisco. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that, that is kind of a common phenomenon, I think, or, yeah, like in San Francisco. Oh, hell yes. We just, in San Francisco, we kind of mostly stay this way. See, if you go to New York, then you know you don't get famous. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Uh, I'd rather keep it surreal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. So, Search and Destroy started in 77. You were, at the time, you were working yeah. at City Lights, is that right? Yeah, it's the only job I ever had. I, and they, they paid minimum wage. So, um, but that was okay, because rent was, my rent, I have to say this, was $37.50 a month. Whoa. <laughs> so, you know, those were better days. <laughs> I, I thought of an idea for a bumper sticker Rent is a killer, but I don't. No one's laughing, so I guess it's not good. I think your new bumper sticker is "No one's laughing." That's actually not bad. <laughs> Since 1977, no one's laughing. Um, now, now, so oh, you, hey, does every anyone in this room get food stamps? Not one per. Oh, one person. Right. One person on a burrito. Well, everybody got them back then, and in fact, a bunch of people I knew got double food stamps. Don't ask me about that. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, the reason I like Burroughs. Uh, let's go back to him. He, you know, that Burroughs and I both got into Harvard. This is actually true. Okay. Except he actually graduated from there. And um, and he was sort of asked later, like, what was the best education he'd ever gotten? And he said, oh, becoming a junkie. And he said, why? Because, because, having to score back in those days, before there were a million hipster junkies around in every city, in those days, there were just a few junkies. And they were all what you call carnies. They were all con men. They were like totally into like all kinds of grifts, like uh, they could like steal your wallet faster than you could blink. You know, I mean, that's the kind of people that he got to know as he tried to score. And uh, he felt this is like the most valuable education. And in fact, he, d he said that my mission in life is to wise up the marks. Get it, you know? So, um, 
uh, uh, that that's psychology. That's right. real psychology, you know. When when someone can just con you out of everything you've got, and you don't even know it happened. Like he talked about this. There was some some guy. He went with him. He went to, with him to Grand Central Station in New York City, and he did this con. Like he watched it, and he couldn't figure out how it was done. The guy, you know, gave him a twenty-dollar bill, which is actually worth a lot more back then than now. If you're ranked thirty-seven fifty, yeah, that's insane. Yeah, and then, and then, right in the middle of the transaction, he said, "Oh wait, I must be crazy. I've got change." And sure enough, he like. That's like from the grifters, like the movie, pretty much too. Like the twenty-dollar, the twenty-dollar change grift. The movie? Yeah, like the. Uh, um, <laughs> um, now, so like, but when did you get hooked up with Burroughs? That was after you've been doing Search and Destroy for a while, or you did an interview with him before? Did you even do the interview with him? It's in Search and Destroy, right? Well, I I had a list of questions, okay. and I let this pretty boy named Raymond Foy con me out of doing the interview. So he 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 did it, but I gave him the list of questions. And then I, I finally got to do my own mm -hmm. interview and my research with Burroughs on the cover. Mm -hmm. But you, know, you have to be careful publishing because, um, you know, you have to get good at, like, how shall I say it, sort of, I, I don't know, there's, there's people that are always jockeying for power around you. That's interesting. I had a discussion with the editor today that was roughly along those lines. Like, there are a lot of people that are like kind of using you as a stepping stone. As oh hell like, yes! That you are a stepping stone. As soon as you become a publisher, I mean, God, you, you get an email like this every other day. Uh, do you think you can give my phone number to G Voucher? <laughs> that came in yesterday. The, well, the artist for all the crass artwork. Yeah, all yeah, the crass yeah. album covers. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, it's here's a sort of a random side thing. Since you know, you know, G. Uh, did you go to the, the art show that G had like at Voucher had at Jack Hanley maybe like two three years ago? Were you at that? She stayed at my house. Right, dude. she stayed at your house. <laughs> did you see this thing of uh, this poster? The there's an anti crafts poster that's going around about a craft show that's or the Stephen Young craft show. I don't. That's Have bullshit. That? Yeah, that's bullshit because. I mean, who is crass? I mean, there are not there aren't that many survivors. I could say the the two of, two of the heaviest weight weights behind crass and crass were, as we look back, they were. I think maybe the greatest group to come out of so-called punk rock. But um, why, why do you the that? two the two principals I think are Penny Rambeau, who has you know this huge plethora of writing available to everybody who, you know, wants to track it down. And uh, G. Voucher, who did the incredible collages. Right. And, um, and yeah, that, that double album, what, The Feeding of the 5,000, I mean, that's got to be one of the, the total classics, not just for the music and for the fact that it was on their own independent label, unlike the Sex Pistols or Clash or these other more famous twerps. And, um, but, but the, the artwork and then the text, it's yeah. just so thought provoking. Just that they managed to like kind of do this multi, they were like multimedia basically at that point and they were kind of. Wow, a fancy word <laughs> for that. <laughs> multimedia. They were like, they were making memes. They were a meme. They were a, a meme before people knew what that was. Yeah. And they still kind of are. I don't know, it, it's just something I thought you would have an opinion on. But, uh, uh, what I... Well, I mean, I mean, I like the fact that they also made the darn records themselves in the sense that they, they, they had them printed at some place, and then they had an assembly line, and they themselves hand-assembled, put the records in themselves, into the sleeves, into the plastic. I respect that. So are you going to go to the show? I definitely. Are, are you kidding? kidding? Because... It's I, next I, Wednesday. Here's yeah. the point. Here's the point. Slims. <laughs> that, the lamp. G, G told me herself, because she was here in February, and um, she told me that that tour has their blessing. 
blessing of G and Penny. And so who else is blessing is required? Right. And they said, he, right, so people are open. Steve, <laughs> Steve Ignorant has to get this tour out of his system. Right. He's got a really good band. This, you know, the songs will sound really good. And he has our blessing in effect. Although, although she didn't exactly use that word, but right. almost. So in essence, like because it blessing, I think, I think, I think she, like me, doesn't like these to use this vocabulary that comes from a religious background. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, it's, you ever realize how much you're in the grip of like invisible, shall we say? Yeah. The invisible control process. If you're an agnostic and you stub your toe, you probably say Jesus Christ or something, yeah. Or worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of against the word believe, you know. I mean, just that word, you know. Belief, as Burroughs put it, belief is the enemy of knowledge. That should, that should be it. That's your other bumper sticker. Belief is enemy. Well, I'd have to, Burroughs can oh, put it right. out. Well, you can make the bumper sticker. We'll just credit him. Uh, now, you did this, you're famous for this other, uh, a, lot of, a lot of your books, like Modern Primitives is one that is like, oh. I don't know if you brought that one. But also, Pranks yeah. is one that I've, uh, I think is pretty influential. Uh, do you want to, yep. did you bring a copy of Pranks? Yeah, because let, let me tell you that I wouldn't be here if it were not for Jell Biafra. Because that's how I met George. Right. Did everyone know who Jell Biafra is? Dick Kennedy, singer and all that? And so I've done... I heard a couple mumbles. So Biafra is in this book that I did. Mm -hmm. This is the first Pranks book. It's really almost my favorite book that I ever did. And then I did a follow-up that Biafra is also in called Pranks 2. And... Uh, so what year did Pranks 2 come out? Uh, I don't know, three or four years ago. Somebody ago, yeah. And, uh, let's see. Okay, there's pranks too. Yeah. So that's all I brought. Oh, I brought this, <laughs> I, br I brought this Japanese magazine, but this has, this has pornography in it. So I, I don't think you want to look at it. Direct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I only brought this because I'm the shadow editor of this publication. Oh, you were the shadow editor? Yeah, yeah, but, oh. but I didn't tell them to put in porn, believe me. <laughs> but, but they, 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 they did give me a big interview. So it's you so knew exciting. that it was a porn magazine that was called Erect. No, it's like, the first, it's the first okay. issue. Come on. Erect number one. Like, <laughs> um, now, I would go back to pranks. Uh, what, have you followed, uh, what, are you, what are your current, are there some current pranks that you're excited about? Oh, well, I don't do pranks. Come on. No, you don't do them. But like, I don't do can... anything. <laughs> 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 I feel like a prank even hold on me then. Um, no, do you, uh, no, no, do you think like prank culture is something that like was like more of a transgressive uh, political act in some ways? Like doing, doing pranks? Gee, I'm very suspicious of words like transgressive because they're so darn hip and cruel. Okay. You know, transgressive any Transgressive. Yeah, yeah, transgressive. I mean, you know, I'm... <laughs> If there's any trans I like in this town, it's more has to do with cross dressing. <laughs> but um, I, mean, I, I, re I realize that um, that San Francisco is, is, has this unique cultural identity, which I call what sort of like gender in a blender. <laughs> well, it's a bad phrase, but I I did think of it myself. Fair <laughs> People are laughing at that one. I think you got a new shirt. Um, yeah, but uh, no, no, no. Like, uh, uh, I was just thinking, like the way the way that things that were apparently referenced in pranks got turned into stuff like jackass. Oh yeah, of course. Like how the, the edge of like you know something that was maybe like more like performance art. Became, oh yeah, like, if you pioneer something, believe me, it's always someone else who makes money. I mean. I'm just telling you, that's the way it goes. The, the, the contemporary neo neologistic language that we suffer through now is, it's so sterile to me, it's so unpoetic, it's so, I, I mean, can anyone name the philosophy 
of this time. Besides, I, I, I call it whateverism. But, <laughs> but I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that's something to be proud of. Shardy. And I mean, I mean, uh, uh, the beats. Uh, let's let's go back to the, which, by the way, started in San Francisco. And, and didn't didn't Ginsburg and Ferlinghetti help fund get the damn right? Yeah, Ginsburg. Ginsburg. He gave, me my, applause for Ginsburg he gave me my first hundred dollars to publish, and he did. You could have just paid your rent for three months. I no, I no, no, I actually started a bank account and put that money in. I wish I had kept the I just would have spent <laughs> You know, if I kept that $100 check, it'd probably be worth more than $100. Out, yeah. Just because he signed it and all that. But, oh well, who knew? Were you hanging out with him at all with Ginsburg? Or? Look, I worked at City Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ginsburg has this, has this thing for young boys. And I'm not that way. Right. But I definitely accepted all his free dinner offers <laughs> just because. I mean, would you turn it down? I mean, you know, and it wasn't just me, yeah. by the way. No, no, no. There was always a little group. Yeah. So that made me feel, I don't know. Yeah. And he helped. He helped get the, the punk magazine off the ground, which then. Oh okay. yeah. He knew. He knew all. He knew all about punk. I didn't have to really, explain yeah. a thing. Yeah. He. Oh yeah. I've been to CBGBs. I know Patty Smith and all that, so it's nice. Whereas if you you, you could mention Punk to Ferlinghetti, and I'm afraid he would have gotten a blank. Yeah. But that's because there was no punk in this town then. Right. So finally, it happened. Yeah. And and where where are you from? Are you where are you from California? Where you where did you grow? Another planet. Okay. Get it. Now that's the standard answer. <laughs> Good enough. And uh, I know that you also speak, you, you speak some French as well because it, it, there's some translation you did for a book. Oh, hey, wow, you've done sir, some homework. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I don't speak French because if the only way you could really speak French mm -hmm. is if you lived in France. Probably a minimum of at least 10 years. Cause they they would say that about French Canadians also, I think, yeah. Well, Kerak was actually French, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't know that. Well, I didn't do that, that's the right. culture he came from, Canuck. Mm -hmm. But um, where, where were we? Oh, yeah. translated a, a book on a French. biography of. Uh, uh, well, well, yeah, the autobiography. Of Wanda von Sacher Massive. Why did I do this? Because I'm this, for some weird reason, I used to identify with the feminist causes, and. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's feet of beer. And uh, I, it struck me as kind of, I don't know, typically, what's the word? I'm trying not to use words like wrong, because Burroughs told us not to use words like right, wrong. They're called either or syllogistic pairs. We're supposed to totally avoid words like wrong. But anyway, I, I thought it was pretty weird that um, her husband's book, you know, Venus and Furs, which is, if, I'm sure everyone in this hipster audience knows that that is the number one groundbreaking um, archety it. archetypal blueprint for s &M scenario behavior between men and women, I guess, or whoever. I haven't read so it. So that book, well that book actually sold a lot way back when. And it was translated a long time ago too. But she came out with her own book, telling her side, and was that translated? Did that get famous? Hell no. I, I blame, what do you call it, um, oppression of women for that. So, so yeah, research did it. Yeah. We done it. We brought it. In the English. And and when did so when was the transition when you stopped being searching and stories doing research? Was that like around like early eighties or it was early seventy nine. Early seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. It's it's the old story that you know, our our little our little scene of really just a couple hundred people got totally invaded by a bunch of teenagers in white T shirts and uh there was a general diaspora, 
you know, of, we kind of lost our first main all ages club, which is the Abu. Oh, yeah, right, right. And and it was uh, never. I they tried think, to reopen it a couple of years ago again. I don't know how long that lasted. About two weeks or something. It's hard, yeah. It's hard to run clubs and keep them going, as Craig here knows. And um, yes, uh, where were we? I, I lost really the thread. Know. Another planet, I think. This is why I like conversations. <laughs> Because we can go digress together anywhere at yeah. any moment, and it's okay. That well, what, uh, quickly, what are you working on now? What's what's on? I, I never work. Okay, what are you <laughs> percolating? What's percolating at the uh, the, the offices? Well, well, you know, they say that 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 you should only do what you really want to do, which is easier said than done. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a lot of things, is the problem. You want a lot of things? I don't know what I want. Well, that's bad. That's really bad. You, you need to spend some more time alone. <laughs> I don't know if you heard the thing I was saying earlier. Well, I, listen, I, I, I feel your pain. <laughs> I mean, I know that's been said before. <laughs> I think I'm over but I really do feel your pain. No, I mean, I think you would understand, yeah. Hey, 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 it's just going to be group therapy, guys. I'm going to turn the camera off. All right, I let's group therapy. therapy. No, no, no. I hate therapy. <laughs> what, what, for, the, for the same reason that Scientologists hate it, or no? What, is, what, what are the reasons? What? What, what are the reasons that you hate therapy? It's a con job. Okay. Come on, read some Burroughs. <laughs> okay, I, this is going to be my new homework assignment. Um, no, you have to spend more time alone, John. I mean, that, that's, that's how you find Good night, everyone. what you really want. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what we thought about it, I thought about just driving off, but then I was like, I have to do this show on Wednesday. <laughs> I'm just going to drive into, like, the woods or something until I ran out of gas. Start a new dystopian, like, you know, Unabomber life. You know, I would not last very long. I need canned food. I can't really hunt or tell what berries are edible or anything. I think the Unibar has a lot to say to all of us. But I, but, but I don't think anybody in this room has hardly read him. But his book is available. You can read it. What, what are some takeaways? What are some talking points from the Unabomber Manifesto? Oh, I hate that word, talking Just, points. <laughs> <laughs> Mirrored sunglasses, hooded sweatshirts, mustaches. Actually, full beards at a certain point, yeah. He knew that, you know, you know how you're addicted to your, your Nissan, whatever it is? Yeah, <laughs> I do. And then they had a cheap gas, and you think it'll go on forever? I guess I don't really think that anymore. I hope not. I'm in a touring band, so yeah. Uh, well, then we have diesel. That's like not as bad. What? No. Diesel? <laughs> Financially. Oh, diesel? Yeah. <laughs> De have you been to a gas station recently? Well, I mean, the ones I go to, diesel costs more than gas. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Well, but it lasts long. Okay, we don't need to get into this. <laughs> Do you drive? You drive. Uh, no, not to call you out. I'm not calling you out. I thought you, I don't know how you got here. I drive I as, as minimally okay. as possible. Yeah. Um, it's true, I have, a, I have a 20 year old legacy car. You know, that it, it, what does it have? 70,000 miles on it. Which shows you that I don't do a lot of driving because I live in North Beach where you don't have to drive. Your rent's not still 3750 though. No, it's yeah. about 100 times oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to stick around for a little bit? I think we're going to bring up Jason. Okay, he, are you kicking me off the stage? No, no, you can hang out on stage if you want to sit on the stool or stand. No, or this is okay. I, I, honest, I woke up with a call today. I didn't think I'd make it, but I stayed, Thanks for coming I stayed out. in bed all day and. To prep to Being come out and meet all you people. Why are they not? Bail, everyone. Thank you. Hey, don't leave. Hey, don't leave. Everyone say hi to Bail. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, you know, technology. Yeah, what do you have to say about it? the goddamn okay. battery. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what's wrong with all, all electronics. It's the battery. So you guys are uh, available. Are these books available on Amazon and on the Kindle? Well, you should buy them. <laughs> buy them direct from Bale. Yeah, come to my office. I'm or come to his office. Uh, what's the website? Research Pub? Yeah, just Google RE slash search. Thank you, Bale. Yeah!